Hey. You know, it's kind of funny to me how... When you uh, confront Christians with this hell doctrine, you see the anger because you're going against their belief. They actually hate towards you because you don't believe in their hell. Now, the stick'em room I went in the other night, and I mean, there was so much hate towards me. Uh, they were calling me all sorts of names and just hate for me was being shown. The scriptures tell us more about hell than tradition ever could, but the tradition is what men follow. In Isaiah 66, 24, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrent unto all flesh. This verse is key to understanding what Jesus quoted verbatim in Mark 9.48. And it's a clear statement about Gehenna. What Christians say is hell and an eternal place of torment. And it must be looked at in the context of Isaiah. Jesus would have known the context and if we study our Bible the way we claim to we should know the context also. The word Gehenna is what Jesus used whenever most Bibles have him say in hell. That was the name of the garbage dump outside uh, Jerusalem. So his listeners when Jesus would say it, would not have understood Jesus as speaking of eternal torment. Gehenna was a place where worms and fires lived. People didn't live there. Bodies and souls did not live there. Now in Isaiah 66, 24, in this verse... We have the believers going out and looking upon the very place tradition tells us that we'll never see. Isaiah clearly states that those believers will see those in Gehenna. He couldn't state it more clearly in, in verse 24. We believers will look upon the dead bodies in Gehenna. That's Isaiah talking. And what will be seen? Isaiah makes it clear that the believers will see carcasses. In the Hebrew, that's pegram, which means dead bodies, not live bodies, dead bodies. This is at the point in time when all in Gehenna have already died in the body and soul. Just like Matthew 10, 28 says, fear him who can kill both body and soul in Gehenna. They will be ashes by this time. And Malachi 4.3 says we will walk upon the ashes of those dead ones. Jesus quotes these words from Isaiah 66.24 in one of his 
own famous statements about the final punishment. And those words from Jesus are taken out of context and form the basis of most Christians' teachings on hell. You gotta you gotta know what the verse actually says. The righteous go out and look on their enemies' corpses, their dead bodies. They look at corpses, not living people. They view their destruction, not their misery. They view their destruction. Other other Bible verses mentions worms in the context with dead bodies. Several kinds of flies lay their eggs on the fleshes of carcasses and they hatch into uh, larvae known as maggots and these serve as a beneficial purpose in the hastening of decomposition. And they're also a, a symbol of uh, pure shame because they attack the bodies deprived of a burial. And to the Hebrew mind, even if a man could live to be 200 years old and have a hundred children without a proper burial, he would uh, rather have been stillborn. And you can find that in Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verses 3 through 6. Like Jezebel, these corpses are left unburied. They are loathsome to all who see them. Now, Christians want to say that death is nothing. You have to be tormented for eternity. So they believe in that. It goes against what scriptures say. To burn a corpse signifies at times a thing utterly accursed. It's, it's, it's God's way of, of destruction. It also was an act of complete contempt. This fire is not quenched or extinguished. It completely consumes what's put into it. The figure of unquenchable fire is frequent in scriptures and and it signifies a fire that consumes. It reduces to nothing or burns something up. Both worms and fire speak of total and final destruction which is a terrible thing. Both terms also make this loathsome scene the righteous view it with disgust, not pity. The final picture is one of shame, not pain. You Christians, you show your heart when you believe in these doctrines without logic and reason from the words of God himself the Bible. You have a hatred for people who do not believe in your eternal torment. What does that say about you? Peace.